and welcome back to Home Built Help's Tip of the Week. On the road this week in Edgewater, Florida, visiting the factory of Viking Aircraft Engines. This week we're going to look at some of their new products. They specialize, of course, in aircraft engines for the experimental market as well as fuel systems and components. Let's take a listen. So the question is, what is new at Viking Aircraft Engines at the beginning of 2018? Well, this is, this, this is new right here. This is an uh, uh, engine package specifically designed to go on the back of a Sea Ray aircraft. It uses a, an extension of uh, um, a total extension of about 9 inches, and that is for uh, being able to move the engine further forward on the aircraft, keeping the propeller back. That in, uh, improves the airflow uh, over the engine package and into the propeller also moves the center of gravity forward in order to be able to have 130 horsepower on that airplane. Another new thing at Viking, um, not, not a new model but it's our 130 engine. The new part of it being that uh, this is the 2018 model of it. Uh, the engine is now laying on its side as you can see for shipping. It's being picked up by Art today. He has a Kit Fox 6 and this engine will then sit upright in his in the front of his Kit Fox. He flies it all the time. He has a, a different uh, engine on it now, a, a 912, and it is has enough power for him without the amphib floats. He's He's been flying now on amphibious floats and he wants more thrust, which the 130 provides couple of hundred pounds more of, of thrust so he's going to install this Viking 130 in his Kit Fox. The Viking 130 of course has been in the very popular Zenit line of aircraft kits. Uh, the 130 is in the 650 Zenit, the 750 Zenit, the 601 we skipped, uh, both the stall and the cruiser models. This particular plane was uh, built by Viking. It has a few modifications to it, but it's essentially a cruiser version of the 750. What we've seen on this engine combination, airplane combination, is that even with a non-stall airplane, but adding the vortex generators, we're able to then win the stall competitions up at Zenit, which we're very proud of um, having a cruiser then is powerful enough to beat the stall version of the airplane. Um, kind of exciting in its in its own right. Uh, other than that, the speed of this airplane with the Viking 130 engine is past 130 miles an hour easy, so you can get a really nice cross-country airplane out of it. 130 is kind of our bread and butter engine. It's been available for four years now. Over a hundred of these engines are out in the field and people are generally very happy with them and so are we. In addition to building the uh, Honda based aircraft engines of the 130 and 180 horsepower derivatives, Viking also specialize in fuel system components for experimental home built aircraft and particularly for aircraft using uh, fuel injected engines such as the uh, Viking models and the UL models and the Rotax models that are in fuel injected. And of course also other um, fuel injected auto conversion engines. Viking can supply a complete fuel system solution for those installations or those aircraft. Um, showing a couple of the products that we have. This would be our flagship uh, fuel tank. It is a header tank of a header tank design. In fact, we're showing it uh, upside down right now. This tank in the aircraft would be mounted this way. And as you can see, the fuel pumps that I just showed are now on the bottom, meaning that they will pick up fuel that is introduced to, uh, through the top here. Fittings will be installed where the green tape is. The other neat thing about this is the really uh, reliable float sensing system that also is leak proof using an o-ring groove rather than a squishy gasket underneath there because they do tend to leak if they're not installed correctly so that's been that's been a real nice feature of this that you can rely on this tank being low in your fuel system below the main wings and then fill it with fuel uh, you would vent it and fill it from the left and the right tank uh, vent it to the original or vents through the main tanks and then uh, on the bottom 
you have your uh, embedded fuel pumps which is basically a unit like this. The, this unit is replaceable if it ever were to fail or wear out that's why there's two of them. Uh, aircraft we like to see redundancy for everything. It has a filter here uh, in the bottom which is and when the pump sits like this fuel enters down here goes through a pre-screen filter and then goes through the fuel pump uh, the excess fuel is then regulated and shoots out to the side here and an exact uh, 3 bar or um, 44 psi of fuel is then uh, exits the assembly to the aircraft engine system. For some of the uh, installations such as uh, the UL and the Rotax and not on the Viking there's a return line from the engine that goes only back to this tank uh, and not to the uh, wing tank so it simplifies the system quite a bit. Uh, low wing airplanes and also for lighter smaller high wing airplanes we have a uh, fuel system that is just more compact it does not give you the extra 30 minutes of fuel that this would you could actually run your main tanks very low with that and still know exactly the fuel that is left to do to the float sensor this is more of a, a sump type of deal um, this is mounted with two pumps and uh, put together like that and then it is mounted upside down there's ports on this tank as well for inlet outlet vents and uh, then of course going to the engine through the exit lastly we have another header tank um, which uh, maybe for uh, machines that uh, don't travel very far from home powered parachutes or or whatever um, it is a single pump tank and it's a very simple tank um, uses one of these pumps of course again it sits this way with the pump at the bottom and then you have your inlet for your vent and your and your feed to the system this one is very easy to mount to an aircraft structure using the ADEL large ADEL clamps in a couple of locations two of these can also be used some people find it easier to mount two of these than one big one like this uh, that's a very nice system one on each side of the aircraft for instance uh, where the fuel comes out of the main tanks um, then you would want to add this as your your middle piece in the system um, yeah works real nice uh, easy to mount the uh, the one thing that you then are left without would be being able to measure the amount of fuel that's left uh, since this tank has that float sensor and a nice third fuel gauge on your panel and last but not at least we have our newest engines in the series from Viking. It's the 180 horsepower Honda Accord uh, turbocharged gasoline direct injected engine. Uh, 180 horsepower is something that we could implement very easily in the new Zenith Super Duty which we have an example of here and we also are now working with a customer to install it in a just aircraft super stall. This is the flagship engine from Viking. It is to compete with the Lycoming series. It has the advantage of being pressurized, being uh, turbocharged and maintaining horsepower to altitude. It is a direct injected engine. It uses uh, all the modern features such as variable valve timing, variable valve lift, uh, high pressure injection, liquid cooling. We've flown this engine now for two years uh, as a prototype uh, installation and we're now selling this engine to customers that are building the larger kit planes that have come about because of the change in the medical rules. One of them being very exciting to us, the Zenit Super Duty.